the slaying perhaps occurred at the hands of third parties, not Mr. Demery, not Mr. Green. So are you saying that, that your, your client and Mr. Green may have stumbled across a corpse? There may very well be some evidence that that would be the case, yes, ma'am. North Carolina authorities maintain there is no mistake and that, quote, we've got the right people. Tests on a 38 caliber gun believed to be the murder weapon could link the suspects to the killing. Results of the test are expected next week. See suburb. Word Jordan has broken his two-week media silence by sitting down with Ahmad Rashad for a lengthy interview that you'll see at halftime. Here's a quick bite of it as he responds to the criticism of his trip to Atlantic City two weeks ago. I mean, I think one thing that a lot of people tend to forget, and even the media guys, they don't know what it takes to play the game of basketball. They don't know what it takes to prepare yourself to play the game of basketball. My teammates do. My loyalty is to my teammates. Uh, and... I must prepare myself so that I can show that loyalty to the team, and I must do whatever I feel is my correct method of, of doing that. And uh, it was a means of relaxing with my family and my, and my friends, and it got me ready to play the game. Uh, I think the media took it out of context. A lot of people say, well, maybe you shouldn't have done it at that particular time, or, you know, uh, you know it was just a bad scenario. Well, no one knows what's good and what's a bad scenario. Uh, unless you're the person that's actually going through that scenario. And I felt it was good that I get away. It just so happens that it was in Atlantic City, and people took that further than when it should. Yeah, I, I had to accept that, and, and I did, but I, I didn't let it affect what my main objective was, and that was to go out there and, and show loyalty to this team, to my teammates, and get us to the next level. It was unfair that I was being considered a criminal for doing something that is not illegal. Gambling is legal and uh, betting is legal. Um, for what I bet, yeah, it's a little bit more than I wanted to lose. I mean, I didn't bet to lose, but I lost it and I paid off all my debts. I didn't want to go to NBC or anyone else and let them know, hey, I lost $500,000, I'm going to pay it this, I'm going to pay it that way. You know, I felt I was taking care of what my responsibility was, responsibilities were, and I lost. Um, my family's not starving. My wife, if I had a problem, would have left me, or you know, certainly would have came to me and said, hey, seek help. My family, my mother and father, who we are close-knit people, and they have monitored me from when I was a kid, when I was born, up until where I am now. And if I ever had a problem, they never had a problem telling me that I had a problem. Stadium, as we look at the beautiful Juanita Jordan, wife of Michael Jordan, and I am now joined by James Jordan, father of Michael. Now, James, Michael has told you this is their year, Andy. Well, you know, Michael says that they've gotten so close this year, and there's no assurance that they're going to get this close again, so he's certainly going to like to go all the way. So for all the parents out there, was there one point when you thought that Michael was going to be as great a player as he is? No, there was no way you could tell. You know, I always thought Michael would play baseball. Of course, he had that year that he, he grew so much, and it's just been a joy watching him develop into the player that the world can see today. All right, hopefully we can watch him all the way through the playoffs. I hope so. If he do, I'll be right there. I'll be his number one fan all the way through. All right, thanks, James. Yeah. Four in Lumberton, North Carolina. Mr. Jordan uh, had pulled off the side of the road uh, to obviously to rest for a while, and he was shot to death while in his car and was taken to the state of South Carolina and placed into the swamp where he was found. Police findings seem to confirm the idea that they had yesterday that this was merely a random act of violence and not a premeditated murder. Again, throughout the morning, we'll continue to bring you the latest information we have on the arrest of two suspects in the murder of James Jordan. Now, private funeral services will be held this afternoon in Wallace, North Carolina. But police have refused any comment. Four people have been arrested for stripping and stealing the elder Jordan's cart found last week in Fayetteville, North Carolina. 
None of those charged are said to be murder suspects. None of those charged are said to be murder suspects. Jordan's body was found August 3rd. The Jordan family has released a statement saying they are shocked by the sudden loss. They're withholding further comment while the investigation is underway. James Jordan, father of basketball superstar Michael Jordan, Larry Demery and Daniel Green also face charges of armed robbery and conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Their next court appearance is set for September 3rd, given to his father. Police are still searching for the murder weapon. Well, I will not say that we have a confession. I don't use that word, but I will give you uh, that we do have statements from both the What about the gun? Do you have a murder weapon? We do not have the gun in our possession at this time. We're still working on that to recover the gun. Quickly, Rogers would not go into detail, but this is a complete switch from his stance on Tuesday when he told the Raleigh TV station that Green was the trigger man. The slaying perhaps occurred at the hands of third parties, not Mr. Demery, not Mr. Green. So are you saying that, that your, your client and Mr. Green may have stumbled across a corpse? There may very well be some evidence that that would be the case, yes ma'am. North Carolina authorities maintain there is no mistake and that, quote, we've got the right people. Tests on a 38 caliber gun believed to be the murder weapon could link the suspects to the killing. Results of the test are expected next week. See suburb. Word is Michael is planning a press conference Saturday morning at 8 a.m., the first time he will directly address the public since the murder of his father. Two 18-year-olds accused of murdering the father of basketball star Michael Jordan appeared in court. Daniel Green, who had already spent time in jail for assault, and Larry Dimmer who was under indictment for armed robbery, are good friends. They are both being held without bail. ABC's Jim Hickey is in North Carolina. As the two teenagers arrived for their appearance in a Robinson County court, North Carolina investigators said they had concrete evidence linking Daniel Green and Larry Demery to the murder of James Jordan. After questioning the suspects, deputies said they found a National Basketball Association all-star ring in a plastic bag, hidden in a rural part of the county. Michael Jordan apparently had given the ring to his father. These uh, two defendants did have or was with uh, Mr. Jordan at one point in time because that we do know where that ring come from it did uh, belong or was in possession of mr jordan according to authorities jordan was killed along this stretch of north carolina highway in the early morning hours of july 23rd driving to charlotte he apparently had pulled over to rest and was shot in his car police say the teenagers dumped his body in a south carolina swamp about 60 miles away investigators say the two teenagers did not set out specifically to murder james jordan but that he just happened to be their victim when they went looking for someone to rob. The suspects apparently made several calls from the telephone in Jordan's luxury car. That's how detectives tracked them down. In court, Demery and Green said very little, but Demery at one point appeared to be weeping. This was merely a preliminary appearance. Their pleas of guilt or innocence will come later. Jim Hickey, ABC News, Lumberton, North Carolina. Questions concerning the death of his father. Jordan just wanted to relax and be around friends. He said he and his family are coping well in the aftermath of the trauma. I haven't really made uh, my death plans for the rest of the summer. Uh, I think this was just more or less uh, a testing thing for me to come and see how well I can respond again for the summer. And uh, right now, Everything's tender for my schedule from this point on, but uh, 
I just wanted to come to see how uh, I could react in these circumstances again. Do you have any good preseason at this point in your Basketball? I haven't even thought about basketball. I didn't think about basketball before all this happened. So, uh, you know, right now it's just the summer, relaxing, and enjoying the company that I am in right now. Uh, I was a time where I didn't know if I was going to make it here. And uh, I know I've committed myself, but uh, under the circumstances, uh, I really didn't know. And I knew some. 1993, Michael Jordan's father, James Jordan, his first coach and closest confidant, was robbed and murdered at random in North Carolina. His death must have been a terrible blow to you. The thing that I looked at, my, the death of my father, unfortunately, it, you know, it happened at the hands of another human being, which, in essence, that's very difficult to deal with, just the notion of, of being able to kill someone. But I had him for 32 years. You know, and he taught me a lot in 32 years. You know how I many kids get that opportunity? Very few, you know, in today's society get the chance to spend that much time with their parents and get that type of influence. What do you take from your parents? I mean, how does that guide you with your kids? You know, obviously my kids are very exposed to things that are totally different than what I was exposed to when I was growing up. But the values should be the same. You know, knowing right from wrong, understanding what education may be, setting certain goals, being competitive, you know, uh, very considerate of others, you know, very respectful for people, um, and just, you know, that sense of independence about what they want to be as people, you know. Uh, these are the things that I learned that I have to pass off to. The man convicted of killing the father of NBA superstar Michael Jordan says he's innocent. James Jordan died in 1993. Andre Green and his friend Larry Demery were both charged with murder. Demery testified Green pulled the trigger, killing Jordan in the car where he'd been sleeping. And of course, you know, I'm pissed to a certain degree because I know that I've been here for 17 years, you know, for something that I like, you know what I'm saying, really didn't have nothing to do with. Green says a new report reveals mistakes at North Carolina's crime lab. The 35-year-old is trying to get his case back in court and has filed a motion on his own. First of all, you have... Uh, them withholding uh, potentially exculpatory evidence. The latest development in Green's case hinges on blood evidence. Back in 1996, an investigator testified she found a small amount of blood in the passenger seat of Jordan's car. But the latest report reveals the crime lab only found indications of blood during an initial test, and four follow-up tests were inconclusive. Green's case is one of nearly 200 under review. Other mistakes at the lab have led authorities to call for a criminal investigation. You know, already see me walking out of these doors, and that's what's, you know, inspired me and kept me going. So this is just something else that pretty much confirms that I'm on the right you know, path. Green says he was not present when Jordan died, but has admitted he helped dispose of the body. He's also admitted to using Jordan's car and taking his jewelry. Son, Michael Jordan, has declined to comment. Carlotta Bradley, The Associated Press. and enjoying the company that I am in right now. And, uh, it was a lot of times where I didn't know if I was going to make it here. And uh, I know I've committed myself, but uh, under the circumstances, uh, I really didn't know. And I knew some of the people, and Rose gave me a list of the people that were going to be here. And, you know, there's good people to be around, especially when you need that, that support for now. We've, we're together, we're bonded. And uh, naturally, it's tough for anybody to swallow, not just my family, any, any family that has this type of circumstances. To be. ...had given him the most support since his father's death. Yesterday, the Charlotte Observer reported that Hugh Rogers, the attorney for one of the teenagers accused of killing James Jordan, has new information concerning the case. Rogers now believes that the two suspects are innocent, that someone else murdered James Jordan, and then the two teens stumbled upon the Jordan's car, uh, James Jordan's car. He declined to give further detail such a i don't know a sense of loss when your father 
was murdered. I know you dedicated the book to him and used that photo. When I saw the boys in the paper, I personally, the boys who were accused of murdering your father, I wanted to confront them and, and ask them why they did it. And I wondered if you wanted to do the same. Well, I haven't gotten to that stage yet. Um, you know, it's been a very tough time for me to deal with it. And uh, I don't really have any feelings against them yet. You know, uh, I guess because it hadn't really sunk in yet, but um, it's a lot of sadness out there with people who, uh, who do these things for whatever reasons that they choose to do that, but uh, I just really hadn't quite understood the reasoning for that. And Can I you say it hasn't sunk in yet? No. No? I still think about it a lot. Mm -hmm. Would you want to ever say to them why? No, because I don't want to know. You don't? No. Because it probably would hurt me even more just to know their reasons. Because it, if it is, it's going to be totally meaningless yeah. to the reason. And uh, it's better that I don't know. No. How are you handling the grieving process? I know I've done many shows where people say time heals. It hasn't been a long time. And one of the things you say in Rare Air, I was moved when I read it, you say you always would look to see if your family was in the stands, your wife, and if Juanita wasn't in the stands, she'd hear from you at the end of That's the game. And that you'd look to see if your mom and dad were there. So I was thinking that being able to go back on the court, maybe, did that have anything to do with your decision or how you would feel having to go back on the court and look at the stands and know your dad wasn't there? No, because my father and I talked about it. I mean... He actually wanted me to quit after the first championship, but I had a lot of things to accomplish. And, uh, no, that didn't have too much play, but it was a major concern to make sure that they were there as I played. Um, because that comfort, you know, knowing that he's there or my mother's there, my family's there, that support, something I really needed. And uh, to know that, you know, he saw my last game. Yeah. So that's the greatest gratification that I can have. But Michael, you know what's interesting to me? I've heard you talk about it, not a lot, but even in the book where you say, my father who passed, and I always think, I mean, I know he had to pass, but I think he was murdered. And the fact that he was murdered is, is, is a searing kind of pain. I mean, have you, have you dealt with that? Have you accepted the fact he was murdered? No, because I'm, I'm a very optimistic person to a sense that I don't look at the real bad part of it. I look at no matter what happened to my father, he's not here. Yeah. So he's passed to me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to look at it in a good sense. Carolina, two men have been arraigned on charges of first-degree murder in the killing of James Jordan. The 18-year-old suspects, Larry DeMary and Daniel Green, are also charged with armed robbery and conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Their next court appearance is scheduled for September 3rd. DeMary and Green are being held without bond. How much did you know about that whole situation? Because Jordan himself was a, a serious gambler. Yes. You actually referred to him as a degenerate gambler. He's a big gambler. Hey, I mean, Michael gambles on everything from what my experience is, what I was told, and people that know him, yes. Okay. Did you personally know him at all or no? I met him. I met him uh, actually at a, a, an NBA deal that we had an event. Yeah. Okay. But he never gambled with you? With me, no. Okay. So he had this serious gambling problem, and then his father gets murdered. And there was always speculation if one had something to do with the other. From what you know, 
again, I don't have firsthand knowledge of this, but being that I was working with the NBA at that time, um, I was told two things. One, that he was told to leave the NBA around the time that his father got murdered because stories were about to come out and there was a lot of heat on the fact that because of Michael's gambling habit, his father paid the price. And the NBA didn't want the, uh, uh, the press. So they asked him to leave for a while. And that's when he went to play baseball. And then when things settled down, he came back. The plan was always, from what I was told, uh, for him to come back. Now, again, I heard this from a source I believe was, uh, was pretty knowledgeable, somebody I knew pretty well, inside the NBA. Um, so for me, it's secondhand information, but I thought it was reliable. And then putting it all together, knowing that, you know, Michael did have this uh, gambling issue, uh, that it's very possible that that could have happened. So you're saying there's a, a strong possibility that his father was murdered because he wasn't paying back his gambling debts. I don't know. Again, I can't be specific. I so when you go out to this field and you see this dead body, yeah, how do you react? Well, you know, at first I'm like, damn, I'm like, this is supposed to be lying. And um, I know from what he told me, I knew it. Like, this is the worst possible place because this hotel is... It's like, um, I don't want to use the word mob, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it's their territory. Uh, people that, you know, like I said, this is the sheriff, uh, or I'm going to put it this way, this is, this is from what he's telling me. This is the sheriff and the police, and like they use this area as like a drop-off point and as a distribution point. Uh, prostitution goes on there and gambling, like they had rooms, like it was just used for them when they would store drugs and they didn't take it off people or whatever, it's, like it's their spot. So the thing is, he's like, I'm telling him, bro, let's just go, right? Okay, did anybody see you? Because I'm scared because we out there and there's a dead body out there. I don't know, like, I don't know if did somebody see it, like you shot this guy, somebody had to hear it. Um, I'm just nervous and something, I'm scared. Okay, okay. so now you're out in this field and you have this dead body in front of you. And oh, no, it's gone. You can see it. It's not a field. It's like a, it's an area between this store and the hotel. So it's like a, uh, pretty much it's, 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 it's where the, 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 the like, hotel property and this store, I guess when it was open back in the day, would border. So it's like in between, in between those two. Gotcha. So you have this dead body. You and Larry are standing over it. What do you do with the dead body at this point? Um, like I said, you know, Larry went and got uh, this quilt out of his trunk of his car, because that was, like, part of his job was when he would move escort trailers, he would have to take a, like, maybe, a, I think, like, the plastic or whatever, it would come loose, or he would have to come get up on the trailer, fix something, and the wheel, well, or whatever, so he kept, kept with him all the time. He went and got it, uh, we put his body uh, on the quilt and put it, in, put it in the trunk of the car. Well, I mean, if the body, did both of you lift the body up together and put it in the trunk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you guys are in this red Lexus with a dead body in the trunk. What happens next? Um, well, Larry gets in and drive. Um, he said, you know, like, where you wanted to take it at. And so I'm thinking, like, what we were actually about, where this happened at, we were actually about uh, maybe two or three miles from, from the bridge over the Lumbee River. Uh, so I didn't know he said something about, you know, putting it in the water. I assumed that's where he was going. Instead, he gets on Highway 74. Like I said, which is, you know, nowhere from this, from this place. It's like less than 100 yards. He gets on um, Highway 74, makes a right, which means that we're driving west. And um, he goes straight to Longburg, North Carolina, which is like 30 minutes away. Uh, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit more, maybe 40 minutes away from Lumberton. But, you know, of course, he's driving fast. Um, when we get to Lawrenburg, he kind of cuts through Lawrenburg, and we end up in a place like, I've never been to this place before, but it's a mile from the trailer plant that, um, that he worked at with the sheriff's son. Like, that was the base of the operation uh, with the trailer plant. And, uh, that, um, that he worked at with the sheriff's son. Like, that was the
Carolina court gave the man convicted of killing Michael Jordan's father a favorable ruling, the first time since his conviction in 1996. WRL has closely followed Daniel Green's case. WRL's Amanda Lamb explains why this ruling gives him renewed hope. You know, you just get to the point where you're just not expecting anything positive in this case. You're not expecting things to go the way they should. No one is more excited about Daniel Green getting a second chance than his attorney, Chris Muma. I was emotional for Daniel because it's been so long since he's had, been since before he was arrested that anything positive has happened. Um, and uh, for his family. In 2020, a judge ruled that Green did not deserve another day in court to have new evidence heard in his case. Now the North Carolina Court of Appeals has vacated that ruling and kicked it back to the same judge for reconsideration. The court sent it back to the judge saying, you need to rethink this given precedent that if there are questions of fact on issues, um, you must hold an evidentiary hearing. He was excited. Everybody was excited. Everybody was excited. Former NAACP director, the Reverend Dr. T. Anthony Spearman, spoke to Green shortly after getting the news. Spearman has been one of Green's biggest supporters. I'm extremely hopeful. Uh, extremely ho hopeful that uh, this, this will manifest itself as a breakthrough that is going to get him to uh, being heard. Green was convicted of killing James Jordan in 1993. His co-defendant, Larry Demery, testified against him. Green has admitted to helping Demery dispose of the body, but has always maintained that he is innocent of murder. No one believed him. No one took him at his word. Um, so, you know, this, as I said, it just seems to me that the question needs to be posed, what took so long? One of the two men convicted of murdering Michael Jordan's father will stay behind bars. Larry Demery was scheduled for release in 2024. Now officials have canceled his release altogether. Parole commission officials did not give a reason for the change, but they did say he has another opportunity at parole next year. He and Daniel Green both received life sentences for the murder of James Jordan back in 1993. ABC News exclusive, a new documentary series about the killing of Michael Jordan's father, leaving some to question the verdict in the trial that followed his death. Stephanie Ramos joins us now with a first look. Good morning, Stephanie. Robin, good morning. One of the filmmakers of this new docu-series, Moment of Truth, tells us growing up in North Carolina, he was very familiar with the James Jordan murder case. But it wasn't until almost 30 years later he came across footage, he says, may shed new light on the death of a basketball legend's dad. Some of the most moving moments of the documentary, The Last Dance, were the scenes of Michael Jordan speaking about his late father, James. He was my rock. You know, we were very close. He constantly gave advice. For many, the documentary revived interest in the shocking 1993 murder of Michael's father. Now, a new docuseries is raising fresh questions about who killed him and renewing calls for a retrial. In the summer of 1993, James Jordan was found in a swamp, shot and killed. His vandalized red Lexus found dozens of miles away. Two childhood friends, 18-year-old Daniel Green and 17-year-old Larry Demery, were arrested for the crime. Authorities claiming that the two teens killed the elder Jordan during a botched robbery and that Green pulled the trigger. But now the five-part series, Moment of Truth, airing on IMDb TV, questioning that verdict re-examining the case through rarely seen crime scene photos, fresh interviews with key players, and never before heard audio tapes from the murder trial. This is the first time that in many ways audiences will be able to see the complete story surrounding this murder. 
In this clip exclusive to GMA, Green's co-defendant Demery, who pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and testified against Green, tells the court that the pair snuck up on an unsuspecting James Jordan sitting in his Lexus, not realizing he was the NBA superstar's father. His testimony was key to Green's conviction, and this damning video didn't help. Green, rapping, wearing Jordan's championship watch and all-star ring, gifts Michael Jordan had given to his father. Green was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to life. Daniel, anything you want to say to the Jordan family? I didn't kill him. That's what yeah. I have to say. But now, as Green fights for his freedom, he denies being at the scene when Jordan was shot, but does admit he helped his friend dispose of Jordan's body after he claims Demery shot him. I, I didn't know who it was. Um, I didn't even know if it was an elderly man. I got involved trying to protect a friend. I didn't kill James Jordan. I'm innocent. I'm innocent of murder. Green's attorneys point to shoddy police work, including a lack of any blood evidence. Authorities say Jordan died of a single gunshot wound to the chest, but no blood was found in the car. Despite new evidence, last year, Green's motion for a retrial was denied by a state superior court judge. But Green is not giving up. 